I want to talk with you a little bit about marriage and family. And I love talking about marriage and family for a number of different reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, I love talking about marriage and family because it helps me grow. I'm a husband and I'm a father actually to nine children and I want to get better. As a father and as a husband, I realize this is one of the most important responsibilities I have in my life. And I know that I'm not going to get better at it without thinking about it. And so it's important for me to think about marriage and family. It's good to think about it. And it's not just good. I like thinking about it because I know that if I'm going to talk about marriage and family, I'm going to have to talk about the gospel. Every issue in life obviously relates back to the gospel, but there are some issues that are so tied to the gospel that it's almost impossible to talk about the one without talking about the other. I think of Paul in Ephesians chapter 5, and he's talking about the husband, and he's talking about the wife, and then he's talking about the gospel, and he keeps going back and forth because it's like, how can you talk about one without talking about the other? And the reality is you can't. You can't. If you're going to talk about marriage, you're going to have to talk about the gospel. And so I like talking about this subject because I know I'm going to have to think long and hard about what God's done for me. I'm going to have to think about sin and I'm going to have to think about forgiveness. I'm going to have to think about eternity, about God's plan for the future. Marriage and family, talking about this issue is t tied to talking about the gospel. So it's a, it's a joy to talk mar about marriage and family, and it's important to talk about marriage and family because there are so many broken marriages out there. In spite of how beautiful marriage is supposed to be and in spite of how God's design for marriage is so clearly revealed in the scripture, we all know that there are so many broken marriages out there. We've all met people who are having struggles in their marriage, and so marriage doesn't seem to them like a place of, of blessing. The family seems more like a curse. That's definitely true in the world, obviously, among unbelievers. Marriages are a mess out there. There's a lot of divorce, there's a lot of abuse, and honestly, there's a lot of cynicism about marriage. And yet what's even more sad is that it's also true in the church. It would be nice, I guess, if you, if you could just say, you know, get become a Christian, get married, and as long as you're both Christians, it's just going to be amazing, guaranteed, no problems. But we all know in real life, that's not how it works. And obviously, I'm not going to take a survey, like put a little poll up there on the side of this YouTube video, but we could prove it, I'm sure, if we were all together real easily, because who doesn't know someone who's dissatisfied in marriage? We all know. Who doesn't know someone who is divorced. We all know. Who doesn't know a wife who's being mistreated by her husband? We all know. Who doesn't know a, a family that is having significant problems with their children? We all know. And if we wanted to make a list of sad stories, we could. Of husbands who make major decisions without ever talking to their wives. Of wives who are constantly gossiping about their husbands. Couples who haven't had sexual relationships or sexual relations in years. The fact is there are so many problems in marriage that a lot of people you meet are pretty hopeless about marriage. We were counseling someone recently who said, I'm so happy to meet you and, and your wife. And we said, why? And they said, because we've met so many couples who are having such a hard time in marriage and all they can talk about is how hard marriage is. We thought maybe nobody was happy. And that's just sad, you know, to see so many broken marriages, partly because of how good God's designed the marriage relationship to be. When you see all these problems, it's not just anything that's not working. It's something glorious. It's kind of like if I drew a, a scribble on a piece of paper and I threw that away, that scribble away, you wouldn't think that was too sad. It's just a scribble. It's worthless. But if you saw this famous painting, this million dollar painting, vandalized, tossed into the trash, there's something deeply sad about that because we know that is so beautiful and that is so valuable and that's the way it is with all these broken families, which of course is in part why I think it's so important we spend some time thinking about the marriage, thinking about marriage and thinking about family. 
And I think we need to start with some foundational issues. I, I, I hope we can go through this quickly, but I find so many problems actually come back to foundational issues. And I think we need to begin by answering questions like, what is marriage? Why is marriage? What is the family? Why is the family so important? Why are biblical, godly families so important? And if we have so much information in the Bible about marriage and family, why do we need so much help? And then from there, we can look a little more carefully at some of the specific problems people have in their marriages and some of the specific obstacles they face to enjoying their marriages, like communication problems or role relation problems or conflict resolution or parenting or problems in their sexual relationship. But we're going to start with some foundational issues. And I think one of the most fundamental and foundational issues that we can talk about is just the question, what is marriage exactly? What does it mean to be married? Now, I know that seems like a strange question to ask. It seems obvious, but it's not obvious for a lot of people. It's not. There's a, a lot of confusion about marriage. I mean, does marriage matter? Why get married? Is marriage different than just living with one another? How do we view alternative forms of non-marital sexual relationships? Even what is marriage? People have a lot of questions about marriage, and one reason they have so many questions is because they're continually exposed to false teaching about marriage. I was reading someone recently who wrote, for the first time in its history, Western civilization is confronted with the need to define the meaning of the terms marriage and family. What's now been, uh, what for a long time has been considered normal uh, is now no longer normal. It's, it's uh, to a lot of people, it's come under attack. He writes, the Judeo-Christian view of marriage and the family with its roots in the Hebrew scriptures has to a significant extent been replaced with a set of values that prizes human rights, self-fulfillment, and pragmatic utility on an individual and societal level. It can rightly be said that marriage and the family institution institutions are under siege in our world today and that with marriage and family, our very civilization is in crisis, which is scary because he's saying people don't know what marriage and family are because there are so many crazy things being said about it. In fact, one of the problems we face right now is that you can pretty much say anything about marriage as long as you do not say that there is an objective outside of us standard or definition of marriage. The world has rejected God as the final authority, especially when it comes to marriage. For a lot of people, marriage is just something that society invented, if you believe in evolution. You might think, well, how did marriage start? Og and Tog were living in a cave with all these women and children, and Og went out hunting one day, and he brought back a buffalo or something, and he was trying to feed all the children, and then he was like, hey, how do I know these are my children? And so he went to talk to Tog, and he was like, you know, we need to sort out who belongs to who, and so they invented marriage. To put it in a fancier way, sociologists claim that marriage originated for pragmatic and economic reasons. Because marriage is perceived as nothing more than a societal invention, people are free to redefine the marriage contract to meet their evolving needs. And this is really the issue, their needs. In many people's minds, God is not God. They are God. They've set themselves up and their personal desires up as God. And so they've allowed the God of self and the God of their personal desires to change the definition and purpose of marriage and family. And so for many people, the objective standard for defi defining a family is me and my desires. Marriage is what I want it to be. The family is about meeting my needs and fulfilling my identity, which of course destroys marriage and destroys the family. Well, obviously, for us as Christians, we believe there is a final authority. What do we base our definition on or who 
do we base our definition on? We believe God is the final authority and that he's the one who made marriage and family, and so he's the one who gets to define it. And I think we really need to emphasize this, even in the church, because we have a lot of pressure to think the, world, the way the world does. And so even though we're Christians, we're really viewing ourselves as God over marriage, practically, so often. So in our minds, marriage is for us, and we get to define it. It's about what works, or it's about our needs. And so often, both husband and wife are trying to shape the marriage into their own image. Take the whole idea of roles in marriage. Joe and Sally come to you, and they've been married for 20 years, and they've developed a way of doing marriage. Joe is a passive guy, and he doesn't like fights, and Sue, Sally is a, a fighter. She's always got an opinion about everything, and she thinks of herself as smarter than Joe, and the reality is she probably is smarter than Joe in a lot of ways, and so even though they are Christians, they don't think the Bible's description of how husbands and wives are supposed to function, wives are supposed to function, works for them. And what's sad so often is their way of marriage isn't working Anyway, they're, they're very angry at each other and they're constantly fighting, but they've decided that what God says about the husband and wife and the, the, the way they are to relate to one another in marriage isn't going to work for them. And so they won't even consider what the Bible has to say, which in a sense is what? Idolatry. That's why you have such a struggle getting people to change. So often they're worshiping idols and they don't want to give that idol up. And so, of course, you could give them a lot of tips about marriage, but you have to go under the surface and say, who is God here? The first thing we have to get right is God is God and you're not. And we have to come back and allow him to define marriage. What is marriage? First thing, God gets to define it. And we have to make sure that we know his definition. How does God define marriage? That's what we're going to talk about in our next session.